Now, let us allow the music of the prelude to set our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Come Holy, Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Breath of God, breath of life, breath of deepest yearning. Come, Holy Spirit. Comforter, disturber, interpreter, enthuser. Come, Come. Holy Spirit. Heavenly friend, lamplighter, revealer of truth. Come, Holy Spirit. The Lord is here. Spirit is with us. Hymn Psalm 5 8.
Let us pray, Lord, teach us the silence of humility, the silence of wisdom, the silence of love, The silence of faith. Lord, teach us to silence our own hearts and minds, that we may listen for the moment of your Holy Spirit and feel your presence in the depths of our being. Amen. So the first scripture or the word of God is from Samuel 1, chapter 17, verses 47 through 50. And all those who gathered here will know that the Lord doesn't save by means of sword and spear. The Lord owns this war, and he will hand all of you over to us. The Philistine got up, moved closer to attack David, and David ran close, quickly to the front line to face him. David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone. He slung it, and it hit the Philistine on his forehead. The stone penetrated his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. And that's how David triumphed over the Philistine with just the sling and a stone, striking the Philistine down and killing him. And David didn't even have a sword. The second reading... Uh comes from Luke, chapter 16, verses 10 through 13. Whoever is faithful with little is also faithful with much, and the one who is dishonest with little is also dishonest with much. If you haven't been faithful with worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? If you haven't been faithful with someone else's property, who will give you your own? No household servant can serve two masters, Either you will hate this one and love the other, or you will be loyal to the one and have contempt for the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. This is the word of the Lord. All righty then. Give me a second here. Um, good, e good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for letting me up here. I'm a little young, so I don't really know what I'm doing anymore. So for those who don't know me, I am Ethan Chung, and I've been going to this church since I was born. <laughs> Today, I stand before you to talk about my journey of faith and how something that often gets overlooked in the grand scheme of life. For the many years I've been on this planet, isn't a lot. My father, that guy over there, <laughs> coerced me to play uh, a dreadful sport known as lacrosse through the many trials of pain and agony I went through. Only one thing stuck with me, and the bruises. Um, a phrase commonly used by the coaches, it's about the little things. For months, even years, I've thought about this, and it means a lot. In a world that's constantly racing forward, it's so easy for someone to just become fixated on the big achievements and the grand gestures and the monumental milestones. However, in our pursuit of these larger-than-life moments, 
We often forget to appreciate the significance of the small, seemingly inconsequential things that happen every day. This is a problem, since it's often in the little things that we find true happiness and fulfillment. While achieving big goals and reaching major milestones can certainly bring a sense of accomplishment, it's the everyday joys that sustain us in the long run. Think about it. How often do you pause to appreciate the beauty of a sunrise or a sunset? How often do you take time to thank someone for a small gesture of kindness? How often do you stop to marvel at the intricate details of a flower or the way the leaves rustle in the wind? These are the little things that the Lord created, yet they can often go unnoticed and unappreciated. As someone who is clearly on the younger side, I take time to appreciate the little things created by God, which has created such a strong faith in him. Despite dragging my bum out the door to go to school or trying to sleep in during church services, I cannot deny the fact it's the little things that matter and how it's the little things that shaped my trust. If you can't help or appreciate the little things, how are you supposed to do that with the bigger things? I may not have as many experiences as other people, but that doesn't mean I have none. Our values, our beliefs, and our character are all reflected in the way we approach the small moments of our lives. Do we choose kindness over indifference, gratitude over entitlement, compassion over judgment? It's these daily choices who, that define who we are and shape the legacy we leave behind. <clears throat> So how does any of this relate to my journey? Well, it's through the little things that solidified my faith in Christianity. As someone who is 16 years old, I've yet to experience many things. My journey is still going, yet I'm up here talking about my belief in God. In the past couple years, I've questioned many things in life, especially religion. The truth is, I hated God for a very long time. When my grandmother, who I loved very much and attended this church for a very long time, I cared for her a lot. She soon developed cancer and passed away a couple years ago. I lost my mind. Because I asked myself this, like, so long. How could God let this happen? Why, why didn't he do anything? This constant mental burden on my head of why God seemingly did nothing pushed me to the darkest corner of my life. I was raised to be a devout Christian without ever questioning it, yet I still did. Was it because I thought God did nothing? Uh, whoop, this is embarrassing. Was it because I thought God has abandoned us or simply didn't care? I'll never know, and I don't want to know. What I do know is it was terrible. My perception of the world started changing at a speed that made a rabbit look slow. Everything I knew flipped around. And then one day, after having a mental breakdown and having a very serious talk with my parents, I had an aha moment. Like, when you struggle on a homework problem, and like, you're just struggling so hard, and all of a sudden, you just get it. Like, you know, aha, I got the answer. I mean, why should I be focusing on the big picture that God abandoned us and be extremely depressed when I can be thankful to him for, being, for giving my grandmother such a good life. I should be thankful for all the moments of joy I shared with my grandmother. Death is inevitable, and being such a young child, I refuse to believe that and simply accuse God for ruining her life and taking her away from me. By looking back at the little things, like the moments I had with my grandma, I found true beauty in life and a true respect in God. In times like these, it's times like these when the little things truly matter. On the other end, you got coaches yelling at you to 
pick up the slack and take care of the little things. In a sense, the little things I just talked about and the little things the coaches yell about are kind of the same. Since you need to take care of the small stuff before getting to the bigger stuff, the bigger things. But like, that's so different. <laughs> Cause like, eh. Another thing I must mention is my friends. Without them, I wouldn't be here. And as all friends do, they make fun of you. <laughs> as the shortest one in all of my friend groups, you can maybe imagine the one thing they make fun of. My height. <laughs> Let this be known. If they do not care for the little things, AKA me, <laughs> I'ma pounce on them like a flying squirrel. God created me this way, so when they make fun of me, I will show them why the small things a.k.a. me, matter. Moving along, so... <laughs> in the scriptures I chose for the service, it was David and the Goliath and the parable of the shoot manager. The reason I chose for such a well-known story like David and the Goliath is simply because David didn't need anything like a bright flashy armor or a sword to face the Goliath, only his sling and a stone, which I find quite funny because David took care of the Goliath, like the champion of the Philistines, with the little things, in this case, one rock. Um, you know, maybe if the Goliath cared for the little things, like one rock, maybe he wouldn't have died so fast. As for the second re reading, um, it's about the parable of the shoe manager. And this is Jesus basically telling his disciples of a rich man, man's manager, who is basically getting fired for doing his job bad. So to avoid begging on the streets, he calls in the debtors of the rich man to like cut down on their debt. So when he has nothing left, he, he expects them to embrace him uh, with open arms into their homes. So the rich guy actually commends this dishonest manager for being shrewd, but he also drops some words of wisdom, which is the scripture I chose. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much, and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? Let's see in this Luke chapter 16, verses 10 through 12. I mean, the literal Bible is telling you to take care for the little things. If you can't take care of the small crap, how will you take care of the big crap? <laughs> so what's the bottom line? The small things matter. They matter because they shape our existences, they shape our relationships, and they shape who we are as individuals, like I said before. It's the small acts of love and kindness that strengthen the bonds between friends and family. It's the little moments of joy and laughter that brighten even the darkest of days. Moreover, it's often the little things that make the biggest difference in the lives of others. A simple smile, a heartfelt compliment, or a listening ear can mean the world to someone who's struggling. It's in these moments of connection and empathy that we truly make a difference in the lives of those around us. I urge all of you to pay more attention to the little things. Cherish the small moments of joy. Find beauty in the mundane. And never underestimate the power of a simple act of kindness. Because in the end, it's the little things that make life worth living. Thank you. Impressive. <laughs> so we've got the prayer of concern, 
At this time, we ask you to silently add your prayers during the moments of silence. Let us keep silence before God and through our minds and imaginations offer prayers that words might not contain. Let us pray. There is a time for every purpose under heaven, a time for gratitude. Listen, Lord, not to our words, but to our prayer. You alone understand and care. A time for what we have to lay down. Listen, Lord, not to our words, but to our prayer. You alone understand and care. A time for what we have to pick up. Listen, Lord, not to our words, but to our prayer. You alone understand and care. A time for confronting what we are avoiding. Listen, Lord, not to our words, but to our prayer. You alone understand and care. A time for recognizing what we hope for. Listen, Lord, 
not to our words, but to our prayer. You alone understand and care. In our time and in your time, God, fulfill our prayers and let your kingdom come. Amen. like hymn number 300. Now may the Spirit of God, who brooded over the waters and brought order out of chaos, find a home in our hearts and settle our minds as we sleep that tomorrow we may wake and live to God's glory. Yeah.